Hi guys and welcome to Pass a Move. Today's episode will be all about the first, very first game under my leadership, which will be against uh, Sheffield Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, there you go. So let me just show you the team actually. Um, if you haven't seen the first episode, you should definitely check it out. Uh, it's just about you know, it's just an intro showing you what, how I set up my team for the season. Uh, basically, just quickly going through what happened during the preseason in terms of transfers, which staff I brought in, um, the tactics I'm going to be using, and uh, the players themselves in general as well. Anyways, for today, for today's team, as I mentioned last episode, our main goalkeepers out injured. Golini's injured for a while, a couple of weeks, I think, yeah, four to five weeks with a broken arm. Uh, so it's a bit unfortunate, which is why the my backup goalkeeper is actually a little bit unfit. And uh, Mark Bunn, who I intended on selling, is going to be on the bench, even though, you know, he's not even supposed to be a backup goalkeeper. Anyways, also we've got Rich Dela and uh, Tyrone Mings in the fullback positions. Baker and Elphick will be playing in the centre-back posi- uh, um, pairing. Uh, Albert Adoma will be our right winger and Jack Grealish will be our left winger. Uh, now, gr- normally I like to play... Um, a left winger who's preferred foot is a left foot uh, and you know the same on the other wing but I figured Jack Grealish is you know one of the best players at the club he should be able to do all right there um, my assistant suggests that he could play as a wide playmaker but I'm not a uh, really fan of his positioning I don't think he can do that I mean you know when you play a bit deeper uh, as a playmaker over there you need to be able to defend more uh, more often than if you're playing higher up the pitch so um, there's no really need for him to play as a playmaker. We're just going to play him as a normal winger, which I think he's more suited to. He's not got a crazy amount of acceleration or pace, but it's decent and it's crossing. Um, well, basically all his other stats, but his crossing and technique, which are the ones that are a bit more crucial, uh, are pretty high stats. So I think he'll be all right there. I'm quite sure if we play him up higher up the pitch, he's more suited to an inside forward role, as you can see here. He's got decent uh, vision, uh, off the ball, decision making. He's even kind of decent you know finishing but he'll play as a left wing, wing left winger for us uh and then in the center mid we've got Yednak as a box-to-box midfielder and Westwood as a deep lying playmaker Jordan I use a poacher and Rudy guess steady I guess uh as a target man and on the bench what I normally like to have is one goalkeeper one fullback one center back one center mid um a winger and an the other centimeters because this is 442 formation so it makes sense to have two centimeters just in case so I won't be playing like if I had a box to box midfielder on the on the bench and I wanted to sub Westwood that wouldn't be possible so I just normally have two of the center mid- midfielder the backup center midfielders on the bench and I ha- I'd have a striker as well so that's Jonathan Kogia for us um now he's a poacher I've, I mean he says he's a complete forward but I don't think he's got enough all round stats I mean they're all decent but um, some of them are quite low, some of the crucial ones are a bit low. Uh, so I think I'll just be playing him as a poacher, which seems to suit his best stats. Um, and anything else would be a bit of a bonus, you know, why not have a poacher who has a bit of vision? Uh, anyways, so I think we'll just be starting today's game. Let me just continue it. We're the last team to play in today's game. I have to give some squad numbers out. Tyrone Mings we brought in uh, on loan because we were short on the left back position. Um, but yeah, hopefully he can perform for us. I mean, our f- first choice uh, left back is out injured as well. I think. I mean, I mentioned all the injuries in the last game, uh, last episode actually. Uh, this will be the first game, and we're the last two teams to play. So, let me just go back for a second. Yeah. So Sheffield, we're we're evens, but according to, um, you know, the prediction, it's gonna go down as a draw as well. So both the odds and the predictor expect it to go down. I'm not sure about how you guys play, but I'm not really a fan of, um, you know, setting up opposition tactics. Normally, you can set it ahead of the game. You can let your assistant deal with that. But I tend to do it during the game. Normally, he mentions something. So sometimes it depends on, you know, what's going on. Um, but normally, if especially if you play with the two-man midfield, if you start marking everyone up and stuff, they can get dragged out of position very easily. Um as you can see here, they're playing with a 4-3-3 formation, so we are going to struggle a bit in the in the middle. We'll have to play more directly to our strikers since we're playing two up top. 
and hopefully our wingers can make up for all this empty space here that we'll take advantage of. We'll see anyways how it goes. Normally we shouldn't have too much possession considering our instructions are, you know, playing higher tempo, more direct passing, being more expressive and, you know, roaming from positions. So we're not expected to really hold on to position rather than rather just be up to our target man and hope for the best. Um, hopefully, you know, it all works out in our favour. Um, I'm going to be changing these settings. I only had this during friendlies because, you know, I don't really watch friendlies. I just more, it's more about fitness for me. I'm going to set it on extended for today. We'll see how that goes. If the, if the, if the video is too long, then we can start setting it on key. I know s most of the other uh, FM YouTubers would have it on key, but I think I'll just keep it on extended just because I like to watch and make, um, tactical decisions during the game and when you watch key you can't really make when you watch on key highlights you can't really make uh too many you know decisions on tactically anyways uh i think i'll put it on close camera if you guys have got any you know settings that you think you'd prefer to see during this like future videos and this video for example then just let me know in the comment section uh anyways let me just tell the players they have to give it their all for the fans i normally tend to have you know give them the main instruction on calmly and then the um individual talks as passionate um when we're home i'm a bit more demanding i'll do it as assertive rather than um you know calm because i think you need to demand a bit more when you're playing at home anyways let's get into today's game let's see how it goes hopefully we can uh you know start well for the season Let's see what Gestede can offer us this this season. Um, we do need a win, definitely, of course, just to set the tone for the rest of the season. I've got match stats set up here and the formation because sometimes the, the team will change formations and um, you you know you won't be pay you won't really see it during the game, so it's better to see it here so you can get rid of it. But anyways, for now we'll just keep it as is and just check it every now and then. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday now do you have the ball. They are looking a bit dangerous, holding on to possession a bit more than us, but hopefully my team can keep out. Uh, Palmer's got the ball, he plays it into Bannon, back out wide, and they just, they're just moving the ball within themselves and see now that they're through and they score a goal, of course they scored. <sighs> Perfect start, five minutes in and one nil down. Looks like they're instructed to work the ball into the box and play in behind my defenders, so that's not going to be too nice uh, I think we'll have to adjust our tactics a little bit more um, now that we're 1-0 down I think I'll switch to attacking so we can try and score a goal and counter them let's just wait while this highlight loads alright there you go yeah just a through ball in behind my fullback doesn't pay attention and I think that was through the goalkeeper's legs that wasn't too nice. Well, anyways, let's just quickly switch that to attacking. See what happens now. Hopefully my players can respond. Um, as you can see here, my assistant's telling me that we're not really keeping possession, but uh, the way the tactics set up and my team set up, we're not really supposed to keep possession. Instead, we're supposed to be a bit more about efficiency and uh, playing more direct football. Uh, now Sheffield Wednesday are bringing up the ball forward and it looks like they're dangerous once again. I feel like we're being outplayed in every department. And our goalkeeper just made a pretty decent save. I think what I'll do now, actually, is tell my players... It looks like they don't have an out ball. They're struggling to, you know, pass it somewhere without losing the ball. So I'm just going to play it to... I'm just going to tell them to clear the ball to the flanks and see what happens. Uh, I might actually tell them to drop a little deeper as well. Because if you saw during the goal that we conceded... Um, they play the ball in behind us, so if we, if we play a bit deeper, it might help them, you know, stop the through balls. But for now, I'm just going to keep it as is. I mean, we are playing away from home, so the Sheffield Wednesday will be expected to, you know, attack more. So we might have to sit deeper just to counter them. As you can tell here, they are playing a bit of a high line, so we might be able to expose them by passing into space and so on. They just had another shot, but thankfully it's gone wide. Let's see. I mean, no one's really performing well. I think uh, they're decent ratings, but you know, anything under six point eight, your assistant will tell you isn't a good rating at all. But as you as you can as you saw there, 
my goalkeeper was had a 6.4 so my backup goalkeeper isn't having a good game by any means so maybe he could have saved the shot that he conceded unless he does look you know a bit um shaky in the back rather than just through the goal and it's listed, we're going to try and pass it to space and hit early crosses because it looks like they're playing a bit of a high line maybe we can expose them through that way and hopefully this highlight will work in our favor um yep see we've won the wall back straight to iu plays it forward to go steady and can he score no he cannot score it's going to be a corner kick though for us and hopefully we can capitalize on that in terms of the chances we've had so far you can see here sheffield wednesday had the one clear cut chance that was probably oh are you almost almost through on goal there anyways they've only had one clear cut chance but we haven't had any we have one one half chance and a couple of shots but they've i mean they've had double the shots but just the amount the same amount on target they definitely have more possession but it's about making the possession count and hopefully when i scream at my players in the second half we can make up for it for now though, as Sheffield Wednesday are going to bring the ball forward. Uh, it was a great tackle by Jednak. And see, again, they're trying to play in behind us. Um, I have, I think I might actually tell my players to play a bit deeper in the second half. That way we can drag out the Sheffield Wednesday, uh, you know, push, make them push into a higher line. And that way we can, you know, hit them on the counter or just, just play into space. Basically do what they're trying to do to us and play in behind them. As you can see here, both their fullbacks are pressing really high up. So we can probably expose that considering we've got two um, two attacking strikers. Two attacking strikers, all strikers are attacking. But yeah, uh, two strikers. And just as you saw there, they just had a shot. But thankfully it didn't creep into the corner. My goalkeeper's not having a great game. But let's see what he can do. Now my team presses forwards and you can both full backs up, plays it in wide. Yes, can oh I thought Gastedia could score. Probably gonna have to set him a nickname just because I can't say his name. Strikers both having a decent game, nothing too amazing. Westwood's having a horrible game, and so is my goalkeeper. They're the only two who are performing horribly. Anything 6.5 and under is a, considered a horrible performance. And their morale doesn't look too good. But anyways, I'm, I'm gonna scream at them anyway, because they built they haven't played well at all and we need to really get out of this mess and you can just tell them passionately that you have faith in them after you scream at them and they some of them gain confidence and get look seem motivated look happy so hopefully they can they can pick it up everyone's doing okay in terms of fitness i might have to substitute tyrone mings because just because he doesn't i don't think he'll be able to play the whole game in terms of formation sheffield wednesday stick into their four four three three in the second half so we'll need to play a bit better there we go see this direct ball to the target man and he lost it there but if he if he could have played a better through ball to uh our poacher are you then you know might have been through on goal we do have two strikers so we really need to put some pressure on the center backs considering that the full backs keep running forward let's see what my team can do in the second half as sheffield wednesday bring the ball forward now just running at my ma at our players and almost had a clear shot on goal i mean that looked doesn't look too good at all the way he was just running through our players. I think I might actually tell him to play deeper and see whether that works out in our favour. How thankfully that that highlight there didn't work out in their favour, but let's see, maybe this highlight will now as Bannon had plays the ball out wide, back into Abdi, up front to Forrester, back to Abdi, I guess. <laughs> I don't even know what that name was. Marco Mascius with the ball and he has a shot as well. I don't know why my team don't look too convincing. Um, I think I might have to play a bit narrower considering how they're just playing through balls in between our players. It's probably because we're on attacking, set on attacking. But let me let me see if narrower helps us or not. I mean, I, I think that will mean we will be playing into our central midfielders more. But yeah, as we hit the 60 minute mark, that's normally where I like to make my changes. Just check, make substitutions. Normally I check the ratings first. Anyone who's underperforming, I'll take off. As a goalkeeper, I won't really take him off because, I mean, can't really lie on Mark Bunn. He's completely unfit. So I think I'll just take off Westford for Ross McCormack. Hopefully he can have a better deep-lying playmaker role. Uh, Tyrone Mings, who is bad in fitness, is having a bad game as well, probably because of his fitness. But let's see if uh, Ali Soko can have a better game there. And in terms of fitness, we're okay. I mean, as soon as my players drop underneath the 75% mark, that's when I take them off. But for now, we'll keep Rudy up top, see what he can do. Um, we don't really have the substitution for him because our striker is actually a poacher. So 
we might have to keep Rudy playing on for the rest of the game. Let's just confirm those substitutions and see what happens. Hopefully my team can respond. I think they're still playing still playing a 4-3-3. They're completely exposed us in terms of possession. Um, I was hoping we could play directly and, you know, uh, be more about efficiency rather than just keeping the ball. As we win the ball back here, maybe this chance will come forward. Gesteler with the ball. Plays into Yednak. Yednak, can you find Adoma? Yes, he can. Four up. Yep, got tackled. Send him off, ref. Will he send him off? He's not going to send him off. Probably just give him a yellow card. Yep, there you go. Piddle gets a yellow card. But hopefully you can make the most out of this set piece. Play for Baker's free. Yes, and Baker scores. This is obviously the first goal of the season, but it's also his first goal ever for Aston Villa. So that was great. Um... Hopefully now my team can respond and go on and win the game. He's completely free header. Goalkeeper should probably do better with that, but I guess he's sort of caught out because of, um, you know, the defenders completely not marking their man at all. We've only got one substitution left, so we'll have to try and make it count, but it would really depend on how the rest of the team performs. We've got another highlight for us here. It's cleared for the Doma. Heads it in, but straight to the keeper. I guess that's not heading in, but yeah, heads it straight to the keeper. We're close to the 70-minute mark now, so I'll just make my another sub, just in, just see how the players are performing. Still, the goalkeeper's the only worst performer. I mean, Yednak and uh, Yednak's not really having a great game. Everyone up to here isn't really having a great game, but it's nothing too bad. This, anything from 6.5 to 6.7 is considered a quiet game. Anything under 6.5 is considered a, a terrible game. So I think, you know, sometimes you have to allow your players to have quiet games. It's still the beginning of the season. Everyone getting adjusted. Uh, Rudy's still the only player who's not as fit. He has improved in his rating, so I'll just keep him on for a bit more, see when it hits the 80-minute mark. As I said earlier, we don't really have a substitution for him anyways. Um, hopefully we can weather this. Yeah, we did. But they do have a corner, and hopefully we won't score. As you can see here, we're, we're equal in terms of clear-cut chances. We've actually had more half chances. But we haven't made up for it. Uh, you can tell um, Sheffield Wednesday love to keep the ball. And they are working the ball into the box. But fortunately for us, because of how we're playing deeper and narrower, I think we've looked better since then. Ah, oh, Jordan, I use offside. If you just timed that well, we would have been through. Um, they've only had one shot on target more than we have. Even though we've had way less shots. Not even half their shots. Come on, guess they find their you. Are you running with the ball forward? Can you find the man? No, he can't. Instead, he loses it, and we're going to be hit on the counter attack. Hopefully, this won't amount to much, and it doesn't. Guess that you come on, win this. Can you find the man? No, he can't. He loses it again. Our target man is supposed to be the best player in the club. He's supposed to bring our players up a notch. If he doesn't, then that's a bit worrying. Can he find? Yes, he finds Yadak, and he scores. And finally, we're taking the lead. I'm just going to go on to counter so we can hold on to the lead a bit more. Um, the more, you know, now that we're leading the game. Oh, what a through ball that is. What a through ball. And Yadak just straight in. That is a good goal. Good team goal. Good play. And he's got his assist. So, so we actually kept Gestedi for a good reason. As just as I was saying earlier, your target man's supposed to bring your whole team up. And he did there. He made us lead. Um, and they are now since we're leading, the, I think Sheffield Wednesday are going to try and bring the ball forward more, commit more men. And in that way, it's going to help us play on the counter against them. Um, so we should be able to expose them a bit more now. But it all has to do with our defending. If we can defend well, then definitely we should be able to play well as well. I'm actually, oh, come on. Okay, thank God. Yeah, I just want to quickly check who their striker is. They see they've switched the formation now, which means I think I need to adjust as well because if they're playing an attacking mid and I'm playing a 4-4-2, that means my midfield's exposed. They're going to be playing along here. So I just need to tell McCormack, who's not really much, you know, not really good in terms of defending, but I need to tell him to specifically mark the attacking midfielder. Otherwise, we're going to be severely exposed I'm just going to quickly make that change and i just want to check their striker if he's pacey see he's got a bit of pace so it's good that we're playing deep um in that sense he won't really be able to expose us by using his strength because we're playing deep uh normally if you play deep and the, the oppos opposition striker is big or you know really strong in the air then he'll expose you if you play a deep line. But if you're playing a pacey player, the best thing you could do is play a deep line because then all the space that they want to run into, they can't. Uh, we're being severely attacked here. I might have to switch into defensive or even... 
uh, contained, but I mean, we'll we'll just see how it goes for now. We'll just hopefully we can still hold on to this lead. Uh, I don't think I would be happy with the draw. I guess that it no, no, wasn't meant to be. I think that was a clear cut chance, but yep, we've had three clear cut chances, so two more since we've um switched to counter since th we're exposing them a lot more. But you know, all these highlights going towards Sheffield's Wednesday way, Wednesday's way is you know a bit worrying. So I might have to switch a bit more defensive. We're hitting the 18 mi 18 minute mark, so I might have to do oh. He's had a free header. Who is that? Hooper's had a free header, and thankfully he just heads it straight to our goalkeeper. I'm gonna quickly make my last say, uh, last substitution. Um, quite a couple of players here tired. Uh, Gustedi should. Ru I'm just gonna call him Rudy. Rudy should probably come off, but unfortunately for him, we don't have a target man. If you do have any suggestions for a free market uh, target man in the market, just let me know because we don't really have the money to actually, you know, uh, bring someone in. Uh, on a transfer, we need a free transfer. Anyways, I think I'll take off anyone who's under 75 and not performing too well. I think everyone's okay. I think what I'll do is I'll take off. Oh, we don't have a right winger on. Should I take off Grealish? He's playing decently. You know what? I'll bring off T Tommy and bring in Micah Richards or Mika Richards, whatever you call him. I'm just going to call him Richards. And hopefully he can shore up our defense first. Doesn't get caught out. I might have to switch to defend duties soon, um, just to hold on to the lead. Hope, let's see what this highlight brings first. And AU's got the ball now, finds Adoma. Adoma, can you get in a good cross? No, he can't, but McCormack's with the ball and he loses it. Horrible first touch, I think, anyways. And now Sheffield Wednesday come with the ball and they look really dangerous, but, and they've scored. <sighs> I think we'll go on to the attacking and try and win the game. If not, I mean, Let's see how it goes. Emmanuelson was with the ball. It was just it was just a horrible I mean he does block it at first, but it just falls back to him and the keeper's already on the floor, so doesn't really stand a chance. But this goalkeeper performance has been horrible and I cannot wait. Look at that six point one. I cannot wait until our first choice goalkeeper comes. I'm just gonna quickly try and get everyone onto attack and see if we can force this matter. Let's get McCormack into a support role. He's not really suited to defend the role anyways. Let's see what will happen with just two minutes left. Quickly go on overload. Maybe we can win the game. Um, hopefully this highlight is going to be in our favour, not their favour. Buckley's got the ball. He plays it to Hunt. Hunt with a... I'm guessing that was a cross, but it just goes straight to our goalkeeper. Hopefully we can come forward with the ball now and, and, and expose Sheffield Wednesday. He's got the ball. He's playing played well today. Adnak with the ball. Adoma, Adoma, can you finish? Oh, he's offside. That was not pleasant at all. Oh, well. I think it's going to, by the looks of it, it's going to end 2-2. If I say that, and now they look pretty dangerous. Um, we just have to hold on for 20 seconds. The draw is not too awful, but it was after we came back from being 1-0 down, uh, I thought I really got through to the players. I probably should have changed the defensive a bit sooner, but I just wanted to try and get the insurance goal, and that decision has backfired. I'm just going to tell the players they're unlucky because I screamed at them earlier, and they did play well. They did come back, and they you know just conceded the goal. Um, but yeah, point not too bad against Sheffield Wednesday. You know, I think we'll have to up the performances soon, but as soon as the players get in, adjusted to the tactics, hopefully we, we can play better. Uh, as you can see here, they had triple their shots, but only six more on target. A lot more possession, but ends 2-2 anyway, so I think we're, we'll be okay with the way the tactics that we play. Man of the match was Abdi. Uh, I was hoping one of our players would be that man of the match. Anyways, let's see. In terms of when we'll be back for the next live comm, let me know if you have any suggestions in the comments section. Um, but yeah, let's see how this season goes. I might have to do the EFL Cup. I mean, it's not really a big game. But in terms of competitions, my board want me to reach the third round at least. So it is somewhat of an easy game against, you know, a League 2 side. But nothing's really ever an easy game, is it? So let's see how it goes. If you've got any suggestions, just let me know. If not, we'll, we'll be back in the championship. Uh, maybe the game against Derby, I think. Uh, let me have a quick look at the preview. Yeah, Derby are like one of our promotion rivals. Anywhere from first to sixth, I think. 
Um, there's Brighton and Wolves as well. Yeah, see, so Derby, I think, will be our first game. First promotional rivals game. Uh, and let's see how it goes. But that's what the table looks like for now. Hopefully, next game will perform well. And um, in terms of um, the players, what I normally do is if you've gotten a 6.8, Anywhere, yeah, from a 6.8 to a 6.9, I would just keep an eye on the t the the players' form, the last five games they've had. If it go if it drops anywhere under 6.8, then I'll just take them off. I rotate them. Um, anyone who's had a game worse than a 6.8, I would rotate them as well. Uh, Tyrone Mings and Jedste both have had horrible games. I mean, Jedste has hasn't apparently didn't make one save. So that's a terrible performance. Anyone who gets a 7.5 and above, I would normally speak to and praise their performance. I praise their last game. So here, Nathan Baker, tell him the defensive work was top-notch. He appreciates that. So that's what I normally do. Uh, players off the bench didn't have great performances, just average performances, really. Westwood a terrible performance as well, so I might have to take him off too. Uh, anyways, that'll be all for today, guys. Um, if you liked it, please like the hit the like button on, you know, just underneath this uh, video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button as well. And let me know your thoughts on this episode. And that'll be all. Thank you.